just want to begin uh, by saying this. Uh, Ed Cooley is one of the best coaches I've ever coached against. Uh, he had a phenomenal game plan. He does every time we play him. He's built a, a, an unbelievable program at Fairfield in a short period of time. And you know, while there may have been some people in the building that were a little surprised that we were back on our heels, uh, you know, I knew what this game was going to be. Uh, they run phenomenal offense, they utilize their weapons, and they keep coming. The, the, the thing that we had going for us was we had tremendous experience, and we had a lot of time. And what we didn't do was panic uh, when, when we, we got our ears pinned back. So uh, we crawled back into it at the end of the first half, got it to a manageable number. And then the second half, obviously, the game plan was to try to disrupt their rhythm. They were in a, in a great rhythm and essentially were carving us up. So we, we pressed them, we went with the zone, we mixed a little bit of man-to-man -man in there. And then once we made the run, obviously the crowd got involved, and, and uh, then it was a, then it was a game, and you know, we we just made the plays at the end. Yeah, Freddie. Coach, what does it say about what does it say about your team? It's hard to three peat in any league, and for your team to do that, especially the competition you put, you played in the last three years, what does it say about your program and what you and your team has been able to do in that time? Well, I, what I think it says, it, it says a couple of things. You're absolutely right. I don't know how many teams have been to the conference tournament championship game four years in a row. That is really hard to do. And we won three regular season championships in a row and three tournament championships. That's really hard to do. You're absolutely right. And it's, it's truly a credit to these young men sitting next to me. You know, I, I've been given a lot of credit for this, and that's fine, but I'm going to tell you, I have been doing this for a long time, 27 years, and I have never had a group that loves one another, that is this unselfish, and it has the ability to compete and maintain composure the way they do in, in, in crucial situations in close games. Uh, we have 97 wins, and we're still going, and we didn't buy one of them. So. Every one of those was either here or on the road. And so we have a ton of road wins. You don't go on the road and beat people like we do without character. And sure, there's, there's, there's some talent here. But tonight, I think what we saw was, was character. Our next question on the end, please. Hey, Coach Sean Claris, WVOF. Um, what do you think it is about your team's mentality in the second half compared to the first half um, in the three tournament games. Got it kind of off to a tough start, but battled your way back and then really put it on in the second half. Well, I'm still trying to figure that out. We obviously didn't plan on coming out the way we did. But what happens is you know, you're playing good teams. Uh, you know, I think you could look at it and say, all right, what happened tonight? Well, tonight it was a great team playing well. There's nothing more. I mean, it, one of the best freshman point guards I've ever seen. Uh, and a team that really, I think, has individuals who understand what their role is on that team. And, you know, the last game, Ryan Thompson went off at the start of the game. He scored the first nine. He was determined. You know, we had, we had essentially embarrassed them a week earlier. And if you know anything about Ryder and that program, they were not going to allow that to happen. So we were fully expecting the kind of fight that we got. With regard to Manhattan, anybody who was at the Loyola game saw that there's some talent there that put it together. And you've seen that all year long. And they put it together against us in the first half. So it goes back to the character, the resiliency, the composure, and the experience, and the belief in one another that gets it done. In the front, please. Mike McAdam, Daily Gazette. Question for Alex. Is there any point in this game where you thinking this one was slipping away from you guys. And also, uh, once Anthony Johnson got his fourth foul, did that change things for you guys at all? Um, There's no point in the game where I thought it was getting away from us. Uh, I think we have an experienced team, and we've been through situations like this in the past. And that's the good thing we can say about the team. We don't, we don't rattle under situations like that. And, you know, we do what we 
just kept our composure and, and stayed together and stayed at it, that things would start going our way, and that's what started happening. And, uh, you know, anytime a, a big physical presence like Anthony Johnson gets his fourth foul and he can't play it as, as dominant as he, he wants to, it's always, a, it's always a big blow for their team, but it, it helps us out a lot. Mark McGuire, Albany Times Union. This question is for Eddie. Eddie, in the uh, 2008 championship, Kay Fisher went off a senior. Last year it was Kenny Hasbrook, a senior. Did you feel it had it was on you three, the senior leaders, to really take over this game? Um, definitely. Um, you know, we got three great seniors here. And, uh, we know what it takes to, to win a game like this. You know, we all been through it. And um, you know, we took it upon ourselves to make sure we got this one. Next question for coach or our student athletes once again in the back of the room. Ronald, this question is for you. When you came into this league, you dealt with Jared Jordan. I remember Jared told me, I'm getting out at the right time. I got guys like this coming in. You got to deal with the same thing this year with Derek Needham. Can you talk about how sort of a passing of the torch from Jared to you now that Derek meeting top point guards in this league? Um, well, you know, I haven't played against Jared Jordan my freshman year. Uh, picked up a lot uh, playing against him. He was a great player. And he definitely gave credit to me when I was a freshman and said I was, you know, going to be a great player. And, you know, that meant a lot to me. And uh, Derek, as you said, is a great freshman, really led his team uh, the whole season. Uh, he's a great player. And, uh, me being a senior, um, I, you know, couldn't have let a freshman come in and, you know, still the, still the spotlight. But he's definitely going to have a tremendous four years at, at Fairfield. And uh, I guess you can say, yeah, passing the torch along to him now. Next question for our coach or our student athletes. Here in the front row, please. Uh, Pete Thamel from the New York Times for Fran or any of the players. Talk about how when you did go to the press and started to get some momentum, the crowd really backed you up and, and it kind of helped swing you back in the game a little bit. Well, obviously, if you watch the first half, the man to man wasn't working, the zone wasn't working. So we felt like we had to go to the press to, to just get them out of rhythm. When they're in rhythm, I mean, they're, they're, they're almost unstoppable because they have a lot of different sets and even more counters to those sets. You take one thing away, they go to something else. And I think the one thing that it does is he's got tremendous space in his offense. So there's always seemingly somebody open. No matter what you do, they're going to move the ball. So we had to go back and press them. Now, in order to press, you got to make some baskets. In the first half, we were struggling offensively. So even if we wanted to press, we couldn't. So once we got a few buckets and we settled down a little bit on offense, then we were able to get into the press. We got a couple turnovers, which led to more baskets. And then I think, in my mind, when the game shifted, was when I looked up and it was 45-40. We were still down. But you know, in a relatively short period of time, we got into a two-possession game, still 14, 15 minutes to go, and I felt like that was plenty of time to erase a five-point deficit. When you have an 11-point deficit, and that baby goes to 17, 19, with 14 minutes to go, you're not catching Fairfield. You're not. You're too good. We have time for two more questions. First, here in the front. Question for Eddie. Uh, you had a relatively quiet tournament coming into this game and then scored 27 points. Did you have a different approach or was it more of a matchup thing with Fairfield? Let me take that for a second, Eddie. I don't think it was quiet. Uh, I think the expectation level for Edwin is, is oftentimes unfair. Uh, he played extremely well in the first two games. And everybody expects him to do every night what he did tonight. Everybody in this building knew he was going to do what he did tonight. The fact that he didn't do it the first two times is a reflection on the other people on our team and what they're able to accomplish. Eddie is going to fit into what we need him to fit into. and His only concern is winning. He's not a selfish player, never has been. He's never been a guy that takes a ton of shots. He takes the shots into flow and he passes the ball. He's got a great assist turnover ratio. He's one of the greatest winners I've ever been associated with. And I'm going to tell you, and I don't know if it's you, Mike, and I'm not, it, it's been way too, way too unfair, his criticism, and he took the last couple days, and I think everyone saw the character that he has tonight.